talking basically about triptychs because these go way back with me. Back in the 90s, I started doing triptychs that were held together by the frame. I had done triptychs before that, but they were you know, a painting, another painting, and another painting. And they're put on the wall close to each other, right? Well, they're supposed to be that way, and the order has to be right, and they gotta be a certain distance apart. And I'd give instructions of how they should be up, and lo and behold, I went to more than one show where the painting, instead of being three inches apart, were three feet apart. Oh, yeah. Crazy. So I, I said, well, why don't I put them in one frame then I'll always be exactly where I want them? Well, in the back of my head for years and years, if you will, you must know since the mid-60s of the last century, or, uh, there are medieval altarpieces. You know, I had an art history course, but it was wasted on me like it was wasted on most of us uh, until sometime in the way distant future, hey, that's important, I need it. Uh, I started looking at those again. And lo and behold, uh, many of them, all of them were tied together somehow, some actually functioned. Uh, but what I took away from it, and what I immediately got into in my triptychs, it's still here, was what I call hierarchy. You know, the middle piece, and the two on the end. Is the middle one the big one? Is this the one that everybody looks at? Here are the supporting pieces. What happens if you reverse that? The little one in the middle, the big one's on the end. Starting in the 90s, I did all kinds of triptychs, varying these, these priorities, right? Doing them different ways. Uh, then I put them aside and had for, well, for another, another decade or more, and done a triptych. But there was one triptych that I would pull out of my triptych bunch, look at every now and then, and I really liked something about it. And so, I, so just recently for this show, about a year ago, I said, I want to do something with that. Now, there's a lot of problems with trying to step into the same stream twice. Can't be done, right? But since I was taking a certain aspect of that triptych, uh, I thought I could handle it. Uh, a triptych is nothing more than a frame with two bars coming down here. This one and the other one. You know, where you place them is what it's about. And so uh, I actually had them. I was thinking, well, what I wanted to do with those bars and what I did in the painting long ago, I made them an active uh, participant in, in the work. Uh, they let things flow through or they blocked them off. They were, in that sense, you know, important. They weren't just divisions or ends of one piece in the, in the next one. So that's what these two are about. I wanted the two end pieces, which are, you know, the tall verticals, as abstract as possible. Now, the middle of both of these is, in a sense, abstract, but uh, much more realistic in certain ways. I really believe and work a lot in uh, one part of a painting in forming another part. In other words, uh, something that's realistically done or implying realism here will inform some strokes over here that if they're separate, they aren't realistic at all, but because they're near these, well, then they become something else. I mentioned in the, uh, the notes that the uh, little blue leaves over there, which are not a triptych and not even a set, um, I was painting them uh, last year I started them, and they were just a relief. You know, I was doing this other stuff, and oh, my brain is going crazy. Now let me just pin something on the wall and paint it. I would love to be able to just do that. I'd love to be able to go outside and, you know, I'll just paint the backyard here, see how that works. Uh, I could never quite, it always becomes something else. I pinned the leaves that are, like, honestly, blowing around outside my door, but here's a nice one. Pinned it on the wall. My easel is my, you know, a couple feet away, and I'm painting it. <laughs> it came over one day when this one was in process. He looks at it and says, it looks like it's made out of bronze. <laughs> well, it did. <laughs> so that's, that's what that, writing in there about, about the brown statue of, of Shaquille. <laughs> That's where that came from. Uh, it didn't look like bronze. Anyway, you, you paint one, then you paint another one in the back of it, and maybe you had a third one, and you got this thing that, it's a thing now, it's not really a leap, it's also something else. So that's, that's where those came from. Um, not a trip, not a set, just individually where they are. 
the uh, the doors. Those plus the doors with eyes here. Uh, the doors with eyes are more recent. Uh, still thinking about those. And this particular painting here somehow represents a new color scheme for me. There's no blue there. I don't understand how that happened. But anyway, uh, lots of things are uh, are fresh for me in this in this room. And uh, so I couldn't really think about overall title, but tied kind them of all together. Uh, <coughs> the doors have a lot of uh, stuff below them that's linear, painted with a brush. I love to do that. Uh, these have them over here. And uh, what I mentioned now are really the, the bones of these things I have in the wall here. If uh, you have any questions about anything I mentioned or one or something else. Another question. The doors. Where do they come from? The red doors. Oh, that goes back a long ways. Um, in my early prints, uh, abstract forest nature things, I would have abstract shapes, and some of them were rectangular. And I thought, well, that's kind of like a door, you know. I, and I, when I put a knob on a on it down here, door knob, it became a door out, out in the woods somewhere. What's that all about? Uh, then I did some reading, I've done lots of reading, and I still read these books by Castaneda about uh, his experiences uh, as a shaman's apprentice and his night trips on drugs or not on drugs. And he described what he saw, and he was always talking about some big rectangular shapes in the dark. I said, oh my God, there's his door, right? Like a door to me. Uh, and the idea of a door you know, opening a door, somebody's in back of it, what's in back of it? And the old uh, door, you don't think about the door, but there are three doors, there's a princess behind one, you know, and there's a tiger behind the other two, that kind of stuff. And so, the idea is that you have choices. And, you know, here's a door, you're gonna turn the knob and open it. Uh, I say, watch out for a door with the eyes on them. A lot of good advice on that. I might know that they're, but, uh, they, they go way back, uh, dredging stuff up, and uh, sometimes I have to admit that my stuff scares me a little bit. Uh, oh, I like it. As I get older, I do things like that. I don't know where they come from. You know, I mean, I know, but I don't know why they're coming out now. The, uh, generally about my work, as I've, uh, <coughs> the years where I am now. I want my work to be like, I would say, a poke in the eye. Uh, what that's a terrible thing to say, not really. I want it to be strong. I want the colors, I say I want. I don't want anything, it's the way it turns out. You know, I don't start saying, well, I'm gonna make this blue really tough, I'm gonna do this and that. It just kind of turns out that way. And I'm happy it does. Um, images with the trees, those are actual scenes from certain places? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I go on Highway 61. I've been on this lake. Uh, I go up north camping every year, canoeing and portaging and all that stuff. Not every, every other year, every year, so so I go to that place every year. Uh, I know it very well. I take a lot of pictures and like a whole thing of reference material I can use. So uh, it's real. Uh, I like the way and some say, well, why would you paint a photograph? It looks like a photograph. Well, it doesn't really. Uh, things happen, things change, and uh, I especially like <coughs> these little sections right here where that road kind of becomes abstract and veers off. Uh, things like that happen. And, uh, look at this. So, you know, I, I use all this stuff, but how it turns out is, you know, not anybody's guess, it's mine. Jim, uh, I don't really have so much a question, but I guess in a way it would be a question for both of you, because you were talking about the subject matter wanting to escape and to, to move beyond the frame. 
and you were talking about the divisions of the triptych serving both as a barrier sometimes and as a flow through other times. So it seems to me to be a kind of a connection there in your your energy that you both have in your painting. Your energy is <coughs> kinetic and and uh, violent, and and yours too, and yours escapes and you're holding yours in with the frame and organizing it to your I need needs. a frame for my stuff. Uh, my stuff is like this. Oh, oh. And so I put a frame on it to keep it all in in a sense. Yeah. Uh, besides the triptychs, I obviously need a frame, but the other ones. I paint them with a frame that's handy no, not finished, but I can slip over it. Oh, yeah, I'm going to take it all, paint, 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 and put the frame back on. Uh, at a certain point, I need a frame on my stuff to, uh, well, just to, to contain it, to make the shapes what they are. I'm a, I'm a designer. I'm a composer. To a, to a fault, I will admit, all right? Uh, if you think these are complicated now, you should have seen them a month before they're finished. I spend the last month simplifying. Uh, you know, I, I gotta take out this division, let this be one big shape, or I can do something down here. Uh, but that's part of it. You know, it's the way I work. Jim, can you talk a little bit more about your, your feeling that your work scares you, and how you, it seems you're willing to continue to go there regardless? Well, I'd like to, excuse me, I'd like to think I go there regardless. Uh, sometimes I think I'm really uh, way too restrained and so on and so forth. And working like this with blinders on, you know, and so I, I'm imagining this out here, that out there, but well, my work is over here. You know, so There's always this kind of a, a pull, you know. And, and uh, I've got blank canvases now. Yeah. The point I'm at right now, you put stuff up, okay? And uh, I cleaned up my studio the other day. Boy, I gotta clean. I cleaned the floor. Uh, it's, it's immaculate, you know? Uh, I can hardly work in it right now, but I will. I'll go in there and start messing stuff up and it'll be funny. And also, in a sense, my head has been cleaned out. Uh, I can, there are a lot of things here I can build on, really. And it's a question of, I got so many ideas, you know, like, which one do I want? And, you know, how am I going to really take this thing and go with it? And you continue to play with the landscapes. <clears throat> you continue to play with the landscapes of Minnesota, and yet I know when you first came down to Louisiana, the landscapes and the, the flora and fauna down here heavily influenced you. Does it still? Do you still do things with the local? You know, the other day I was out of St. Francisville for a funeral. Um, nothing not, not changes, but where were we? Uh, French, settlement. French settlement. Yes, French settlement. I hadn't been out there in 20 years. And it was still, you know, fields, you know, a church here, the cemetery right outside. The hearse had to go 100 feet here to there. Uh, and, and trees and uh, you know, the breeze blowing and the grass waving. And uh, the sun was just right, and I thought, you know, I could do something with this. <laughs> uh, basically, I haven't done Louisiana landscapes. Uh, it, my baggage in me is from somewhere else, all right? Uh, but uh, I looked out there and said, you know, I should come back here someday when the light's right and, you know, look around. There's <coughs> things here that I could use. I felt, but, uh, Swamp scenes, no, magnolias, no, the usual. See, the thing is, when I came down here, uh, there was already this culture, you know. You know I thought, oh, Lord, <laughs> I don't want to do this. <laughs> so I did it, but I'm seeing other things now, you know, that I overlooked. I, they were here, I just overlooked. 